Hi, welcome back to my garden. My name is Emily and I garden in Zone 7B in Georgia in the United States. And I want to show you my fall garden as it is here in the middle of September. I actually have done a lot of fall planting in the last two weeks and I have more to do, but I want to show you where I'm at now before we get too far into the month. You have a sneak peek behind you. I went ahead and set up my first row cover situation and I'm so pleased with it. I'll tell you all about it, so let's go check that out. Underneath this row cover, weighed down by my makeshift sandbags, I have broccoli and Alabama collards. The Alabama collards are here in the front. They have a little bit of a purple veining to them. Something is chewing on the lower leaves, but I don't think I have caterpillars. I think that those are roly-polies or slugs, probably. But I did spray for BT a couple of times so far, and I'm pretty sure that this cover has protected them well from the caterpillars and the moth. So further back in, you see broccoli. So pretty much from here onward, I have broccoli. And it's so funny, I almost didn't start any, but I just can't resist starting more seeds. And brassica seeds germinate really easily. There are some squirrels yelling in the background. But my broccoli is growing fine. And this is the first year that I'm protecting it. So I really hope that that gives it a, a better start for fall. I've never gotten fall broccoli. It usually overwinters and then in January it starts bolting and then I snip off the bolting broccoli, kind of like early spout sprouting broccoli would be. So this is the best broccoli I've ever had. I'm pretty happy with it. I've got DeCiso and Waltham varieties growing that I started from seed. I also started the Alabama collards from seed. I do have my Georgia Southern collards as well. They're a little bit younger. I have not transplanted them out, but they are all, almost hardened off as of today. Let me show you what else I've already planted for fall. Here in my so-called shade garden, I have some chamomile planted. Chamomile, chamomile. It's that white flower that you use in tea. And I overwintered it last year and got the most amazing amount of chamomile flowers that I dried. And we'll see if I drink it, but I couldn't resist starting some seeds and transplanting them out. These are the ones I have back here, but just in case these don't get enough sun, I do have a couple in a pot. And honestly, these are looking really good, really big and healthy. They're significant in size. I mean, there's my hand compared to it. And they are growing, so I think they're getting enough sun. They might actually do something. And if you hear the crunching of the leaves, we have started the fall leaf drop. So for context, now I'm going to show you this next section. Here next to the chamomile is my Swiss chard attempt. They are actually surviving. I have Swiss chard every foot or so. Some were bigger than others when I planted them out, but I haven't lost any. They just are floppy. But these leaves getting pretty large give me some hope. It sure looks nice. I really hope those do well. The best one, I think, is this yellow one I have right there. Let's go look at the next couple types of plants I've planted. So over here, the big plants you see are my foxgloves. I have a couple rows of them that I started from seed last winter. They will flower next year. They like the shade and they honestly look pretty nice back here. They're very very filled with healthy leaves and they don't need much sun. But here in front of us, in front of the foxgloves, are some Chigimacy transplants. They were so upset with me for keeping them in the pots as long as I did, but some of them are looking pretty nice. These are my bigger ones. They are growing, although just in the last couple days something started chewing on them. It honestly looks like roly-poly damage, but we'll see what they do. And the last thing I want to show you are my snapdragons. If you watch my April and March garden tours, you saw my snapdragons. It was an amazing year for snapdragons, and I thought, why change what I'm doing? So here are a couple rows of snapdragons, the deluxe tall blend, and I also have apple blossom from the In My Gardener line. These are all snapdragons there. I have already pinched most of these snapdragons. There were a few that were small and I had not pinched yet. But the pinching is so worth it. Look at that. That is one plant 
and I pinched him a long time ago and he's already branched off into three sections. You get really strong, tall snapdragons by pinching. I started all these snapdragons from seed, but these, fo these um, not foxglove, these are borage seedlings that started up in a pot that I transplanted back here. They haven't died, but they also haven't done much. I think they really need more sun, but I didn't want them in the pot. So we'll see if I get some borage here in the fall. Here in the corner of my shade garden, I have my herb section. So for reference, there's my broccoli, but here are some green onions, my oregano, a couple times of thyme, and then a little more Greek oregano. I did just recently transplant some, some parsley. The parsley has these little white spots on it. I don't know if it's sick, but the parsley I had growing here earlier had that too. So it might be a disease. I have had such good luck growing parsley back here. Massive, massive, massive parsley plants. So I really hope that I can just get big mounds of parsley going. I also planted it back toward the rosemary, so we'll go there next. And in this little section, in the shade garden, I have some transplant green onions that I pulled out of the ground. I grew these from seed, pulled them out of the ground, and then replanted them over here because I wanted them moved. And they actually really, they transplant so well. <laughs> so I barely bothered planting these. I just literally threw them in the dirt that was here. And then in front, I have a couple more parsley transplants that are getting covered by leaves. And these nasturtiums are from spring. This little spot in the shade garden is behind the foxgloves, and I am so excited. I have my red vein sorrel planted back here, and it is beautiful, and it is growing. The leaves are falling around it, but it is growing. Now I'm in one of my, my beds. I call them the quad beds because they're four side by side, and I have some white powder down that is diatomaceous earth because this bed is infested with roly-polies. And they are leaving my beet transplants alone. I transplanted beets all throughout this bed, but they will devour pea seedlings. So I have double rows of pea seedlings because I fully expected them to be eaten by the roly polies no matter what I did. But fortunately, it looks like the roly polies are giving me a break. I have this row here. I have a couple more rows. I have some there and some zinnias next to it. We'll see if they do anything. And then beets all around. And then I have one more big row of peas over here. This little squash is not doing anything. It's just a little zucchini that I threw some seeds for and kind of ignored. So it's sick. I probably just need to tear it out. So things are not all going perfectly. This little patch here is supposed to be some carrots. I tried to sow carrots a few times earlier in the in the late summer and it probably was just too hot. So those little green spots there are some carrots and they're not probably going to do anything. But one thing I am pretty pleased with is my fall marigolds behind this trellis here. These strings were for pea seedlings to grab onto one year. But these marigolds are just so lovely and so fall colored. We'll come around and look at them. This is why I planted them was for the fall. I wanted to have these orangish red. These are the sparky French marigolds and uh, I'll I'll try to put the seed brand company on on the screen for you but they are just so pretty. These are the ones that last year were covered in blooms and before the first frost I just picked the whole plant and put it in a vase because I just loved how pretty they were. This is one of my beds in the full sun and I have just filled it with seeds. We've got a little bit of germination. Just today, these these radishes popped up. These are some German giant and sparkler radishes, so they're red mostly. Oh, I'm so happy. I have a little bit of cilantro planted right there. And uh, right here, I have a little bit of kohlrabi. We're just trying direct sowing it. It's probably, could be too late for that. This section right here, I have Chijimisi seedlings that are germinating paint little green. I have spinach sown here. That'll be nice because it's underneath some peppers. So the peppers are shading that spot really heavily, hopefully keeping it a touch cooler. And then up front I have arugula and I have some seedlings germinating. 
for arugula up there. This bed is the other full sun bed and I have sown lettuce throughout and I'm just now seeing, they're so small I almost lost them, there are a couple little lettuce seedlings that germinated right here. It'd be so fun to have direct sown lettuce pop up here in the fall. I did that in the spring and it was just so easy. Next to the lettuce, I have a couple rows of Chiogia beets. And, um, oh yeah, I did plant beets in the other bed too, some robin beets. They're not coming up yet. For the lettuce, I know we all like varieties. I've got Merlot, Bib, Ooh, mosquitoes are going after me, Tango Red and Tango Green and then Marvel of Four Seasons, which I see has germinated. That Marvel of Four Seasons is my newest pack, so it probably has good germination. Oh, and this has me so happy. I have some watermelon radish. This is one I sowed like a month ago that actually made it. It might actually do a root, and I've re-sown around it like twice, but I have new watermelon radish seedlings. They look a little damaged. There's, there are a lot of roly-polies out here at night, but I have, I have many. So I'm optimistic. I'm actually going to get lots of watermelon radishes. They're fun. They're pretty large too. So that's on the other side of the lettuce. So I have my state fair zinnia. I just pulled out my edamame today. This spot is empty. I need to put some seeds in here. But I'm really thrilled with my zinnias. They're not too sick. And they're set with blooms. So I'd love to get a bunch of big zinnia flowers here. And then I'm really proud of the sunflower. This is quite a pretty thing. I didn't know it'd be yellow or this multi-headed. Look at that. D. Okay, last thing I'll show you here is my hardening off process. It's a little, little messy today. It was hot. It's going to get up in the mid 90s this next week out of nowhere. So I actually am on the fence about whether I'll transplant anything yet. There are my kale and collards, a couple snapdragons, my lettuce that I just sowed in a flat. I really need to transplant it out, but now I'm afraid about the heat. It's going to go in the shade garden. All of this is pretty much going in the shade, so it, it probably will be okay even if it's in the 90s a couple days. These are some neglected herbs and such that I need to up pot and um, just have not made time for. They almost died yesterday from lack of water. It dried out quickly in the sun, so I don't know. Some of them didn't make it. Overall though, I have a lot of planting left to do and then I think I'll be done. I'll put some more seeds down in my gaps and then just enjoy the rest of the fall harvesting things. So everyone, thank you for watching this video and hope you stick around to see how these seedlings all do. You see the mosquitoes flying around, so I'm going to go inside. <laughs> and otherwise, please subscribe if you haven't already.